What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be going over what has changed with Madden 25 franchise and what you can expect when you end up getting the game if you have not gotten it already. So right away, you can see that the entire franchise screen looks much different than it has in the past. Now, it's more of just a UI change, but there is a, sort of a difference in how things work. So on this front screen here, now you have a lot more information that you can look at. Plus you have the top stories over on the right side. So the hub here is where you're gonna do a lot of your stuff. And we'll look back at this after I simulate this first week so you can see what it will look like once games are played. First though, training camp. There hasn't been much changes to the training camp, but there are a few new options and it's a lot less cluttered now. So you have the target passing and pocket presence for quarterbacks, um, only rushing attack for, for running backs, uh, pocket protector, which is a new one for the offensive linemen. And everything else is the same. So this pocket presence one is pretty simple. You just dodge those balls. You throw it through the targets when they appear. And you have to make sure you have it aimed upright. What I've learned so far, make sure that you lob the passes. Do not throw a bullet because nine out of ten times it will not even hit the target or it'll hit like the outer circle. So that's the one thing I have noticed. If you throw a lob, chances are you're going to end up getting the uh, bullseye a lot easier and you see how i just missed that when you have to make sure that you are perfectly lined up otherwise it will not count for a hit and this is all timed so i like this one it's a little bit more fun and there's more stuff to do um than uh, the target passing it takes a little bit more concentration and it gives you a little bit of opportunity to play around and get used to the movements of the quarterbacks in the pocket as well rushing attack has had a little bit of an update now you can see up in the top left that you have a minute and a half now so everything else has stayed the same. You also have a third defender instead of two, but now you have a minute and a half and it makes it a ton easier. Last Madden, you, you pretty much had to get a touchdown on every single carry, no matter what. And if you had a lower or slower running back, it sometimes was a little bit more difficult to get the separation you were looking for in order to get the angles to get those touchdowns every time. But now you have plenty of time to make mistakes um make some moves like that you know do whatever you need to do to get the gold and also just toy around and learn some of the moves because it, the movement feels a little different this year it doesn't like feel astronomically different but there is definitely a difference in how your momentum works but the purpose of this is really to just show you how much easier it is to get this gold trophy it won't be as much of a task as it has been in the past where you're like restarting because you got tackled one time just so that way you have enough time to potentially get gold now this new pocket protector game i'm going to tell you right now i can already i can already tell it's going to be a pain in the butt you have to essentially run around non-stop blocking these balls which gradually increase in speed and how often they they shoot out and you also have to run around and get those like little bonus boxes you see like to to change your multiplier or get re reset on stamina and it, it seems like it's really easy but as you go you'll see like i just missed that one you will see that it's actually not as easy as it looks and if you do that stepping into that little circle it completely ends the game so you cannot do that and essentially what your goal is to just run around like crazy until you knock all the balls down and you get a gold but i have yet to get gold in this in this mode i'm not gonna be honest with you guys i have not hit gold at all i i keep trying to go for the multipliers and the stamina refill and then i'll miss a, a ball and then once in a while you'll think you have the angle and you'll just miss it outright and then it's like too late to reset ah, okay i got that one but yeah so this is the new one this is at least allows linemen to have something to look forward to in training camp whereas before like it was worthless to put your linemen in the training area because they just they weren't able to get all the extra xp that you could get for your other positions and if you couldn't get all the extra xp for the position then you're wasting a slot having a lineman in there when you could be doing something oh i just messed it up i almost had it there but yeah so now we actually have something for offensive linemen to get better at which i do appreciate one of the bigger changes though is this little box at the bottom left you see where it says two new messages you have a coach's hub and this is going to be a communication that you have between your coordinators your gm uh your players all about the upcoming opponents and this is where you'll get a lot of the storylines and you'll actually get updates too about players available around the league and injuries which is sort of nice so like here at the top one it just says hey preseason's here yada yada that one's a pretty basic one here's an example of the around the league stuff 
High priority. Just saw that Bryce Huff from Philadelphia is on the trade block. I think he'd be an improvement over Jerry Tillery. You should take a look. And then if you hit the square, it'll actually bring you to the screen that they are they are recommending. So you can go to the trade block. And if you go down to the right end position, you can see that Bryce Huff is on the trade block. Now, 99% of the time, it's just going to tell you the top person there. It's not going to do like scheme fit or anything like that. Um, and it's just going to go off of like your biggest needs. So it's, it's nothing that like phenomenal, but it is just nice to just, maybe you don't know that somebody got put in there and you'll also get notifications on this when say a player breaks down in negotiations with their team, it'll say, hey, this player might be available coming the off season. So keep an eye out for it. And then as we get to the week two and you can actually see the full screen here for this hub, you'll see how this works. So you have the matchup screen initially, and then here you'll see the stats comparison screen, the conference standings, the season stats and the leaders, the top three leaders for all positions or for all categories. And then you'll have your goals here at the bottom. Now over on the right side, you have the top stories. You'll see, you know, updates from your team. You'll see updates from other teams. You'll see, you know, uh, scouting report stuff coming up over here. So it's just a little bit easier way to track it. Of course, you can still go to news and just see it in the way it is. This hasn't changed at all. It looks like they focus mainly on just this home hub page what they're calling it. So. And then you'll see that you have a lot of storylines. This year, you are gonna have quite a few storylines. It's not gonna be as simple. I mean, it, it, you can still just sim through everything, but if you really want to actually have some changes to your team or feel a little bit more immersed, this isn't going to like break the game and make everything awesome, but it does add more thought into your franchise. You'll have different ones almost every week I had I did a full run through on a couple of seasons and I swear I would say about 90% of the time every advance I had some type of storyline to look at whether that was a new one a continuation of one um, press conferences like everything matters that you do now if you click on these it's going to pretty much put you into a box of what you have to do and I'll show you what I mean so here is telling me I have a press conference to do and they're going to ask me about position battles and this one I, I already saw this one with the Vikings the last time I did this so I'm assuming it's going to be the same but you actually get given position battles to do based off of your roster and you have the ability to say there's no position battle if you don't want to have one but you can also instill one automatically by answering these questions and then you can choose what stat you're going to look at for determining the winner of the position battle and if you don't follow along with it you can actually negatively infect your team with their morale and then see see here i can say there will not be a battle most sacks most tfls we'll just do most tfls Whoever finishes with the most TFL. So now essentially what that means is I have to track, you know, which one of these guys is going to have the most TFLs. And then they essentially won the starting job and I have to put them as a starter. And I don't know, man, I so maybe you guys do this. I like having position battles and sort of feeling like I don't have to just make the determination myself. Like something in the game can tell me what I have to do. So I, I enjoy having that, even if it is pretty predictable, it still gives us something to look forward to. And then you'll see on the top stories now, Jonathan Bullard, who is right now the presumptive starter, saying he wants to start. He wants to win this job. And, you know, he has to worry about the other left end sneaking up on him if he doesn't perform in preseason. The other portion of this is being able to make adjustments to your players and making sure that your players trust you. So this next one is called player meeting. It's a sideline conversation. So you're going to come into the practice field and you're going to be on the sideline with a player. I believe this is Jonathan Bullard because it's probably the same one that I saw last um, on my practice run throughs. Yes. And it says my agent's been telling me that my personality can be a problem sometimes. And that's one thing I'll talk about soon is the personalities. You can change personalities and players have them. And you have to know how to talk to them. Be honest with me. I know I'm intense. Intense is one of the personalities that you can have as a player. Would you change that about me? And you can tell them, no, I don't want you to change. You can say, I want you to be more of a leader. I want you to be more of a team player, yada, yada. So I'm going to say, I want you to be more of a leader. And if he trusts you enough, he will say, I feel like I trust you enough to take your advice. And you just change his personality type now. Now, I'm not 100% sure what type of impact this can have on the player down the line. I haven't done like a full on like five to 10 year sim to see if it really affects anything but i do know that there is five different types of personalities and i feel like it might come into play later on with some of their motivations and what they consider to be important five are team player entertainer intense leader and unpredictable so those are the five different terms that i have seen on players for their personality types 
and I feel like this could affect like their morale maybe personally um so you have to sort of you know keep an eye on that now again not a game changing thing but it is something else to keep an eye on and something else to just make you feel like you're you have more decisions to make inside of, of the franchise that you're running and now that we're at the end of the preseason we have to go and check on the tackles for loss to see who won the job so let's see bullard had three and well he's he's tied for first so we know he won the job and let's find our other one, Jonah Williams. He had zero. So Jonathan Bullard won the job or keeps his job. And that'll end up being the, the end of that storyline for the position battle. It says preseason's over. It looks like our position battle is complete. Based on what you said in the press conference, Bullard won the battle. Do you agree he won it? You can go back on this claim, but if you do, it's going to negatively affect your team and how they view you and your morale is going to drop. So like, yes. And there you go. And then you'll actually get boosts for following through on your word. Bullard has earned a plus three block shed, finesse move, and power move for the next three games, and the entire team earned plus five morale. And then this one is tough. I'm not a fan of this one because it locks you into a spot. This is asking you what to expect from your, your team this year, and this one is asking about defense and asking if, like, what you want to do during the season. So let's just say create turnovers and sacks. Will be opportunistic and force turnovers and sacks but the problem is it gives you a, a, an actual number that you have to follow through on otherwise you could lose morale with your team so what specifically and this is a lot 18 interceptions or 40 sacks we're gonna go for 40 sacks and it is a little you know robotish with the the way they worded everything but they will check back later and if you are not correct on your identity or what you choose, like in this case, getting 40 sacks, it will hurt the morale of your team and your player morale will drop. And you will have a few of these to go through at the beginning of the season that's gonna sort of dictate what you do with your team. And now here's the press conference one. You'll have press conferences on a regular basis. I had about four or five of them throughout the season. Um, and just ask about different things, like how do you handle your QB's development? This one is big. Right now, this I feel like there might be a bug with this, but if you decide to sit your quarterback, you can actually end up having like a rookie quarterback, I should say. You can end up getting a bunch of extra development at the end of the year. And if you play him, you know, then of course he, he won't do that. So I'm gonna put, he's going to sit and we're gonna see what happens at the end of the season. Now, last time when I did this, it said he still played even though he didn't. So I don't know if that's a bug or if he has to be completely off the depth chart, but this video is gonna tell us that answer. So. And then you can still back out if you want to, but we're not going to. He's gonna play in less than three games. And this one could be a very big changer for your franchise if you do draft a rookie quarterback and you have a guy that you deem as like a bridge quarterback, you can let him play for the season and then your quarterback can continue to work on things throughout the season and get a, a huge boost in their ratings and their development later on down the line. So we just said that JJ McCarthy is gonna sit for this season, right? So let's go and look at his stats here and let's see what he is good at. Let's do with his upgrade that he got from the drill before. So we see that his play action is 75, his under pressure is 81, his awareness is 63. So if anything, we probably want to try and get his awareness up, maybe his throw under pressure. Um, his accuracies could use a bit of a touch up, especially his deep accuracy. So now when we go and talk to the coaching staff, we can tell them what it is that we want them to work on. And then here's another story. Like I said, man, it's been only like what I'm in week one. I've already had to do this like five or six times. And now we're at training camp here. Going into the season, what area of the team is the strongest? And this is where you get put into a spot too. You have to choose offense or defense and that's gonna give you a certain task. So let's just go offense here. One thing I learned by mistake is if you choose balanced offense, it's going to make you commit to either 50% running or 1500 yards on the ground. And then here, I know that the pass defense worries me a little bit, so we're gonna go pass defense. But if you select this, you have to hit it. Otherwise, again, you're gonna lose morale. And then here, you gotta pretty much call players out, man. Um, we're gonna go corners. We need our corners to be more consistent. And then what would a successful season look like statistically? And this one I'm not a big fan of. Our top two corners with 10 picks. I mean, that's not really realistic. And then as a team, we give up less than 3,500 yards. We're gonna take that one because that's a little more, I guess, achievable in a sense. And they will check back at the end of the season and say, hey, we, we remember what you said. 
and you were wrong or you were right and it will affect you negatively or positively with the rest of your team and then on to the one of the other changes and i wouldn't really call it a change i just call it maybe like a facelift is the scouting area this is the board that you will see now and the one nice thing is you can change this by attributes physicals combine or pro day so if you really don't care what a dude's you know awareness is and you just want to know how fast he is you can just go down to physicals here and you know search boom elite great so there is two guys with elite acceleration in this draft class both of them are tight ends okay well <laughs> uh well you guys get what i'm what i'm trying to say at here um you you can organize this list however you want you can add them to your favorites list the, the one thing i don't like about this though is you cannot change the order so whatever order you put them in you cannot readjust it on your favorites list that is the order they're going to be in and then you essentially but like you can change their their sorting though which is nice so if you want to go by the youngest you can do that if you want to go by projection talent scouting percentage whatever it is you can order it that way but you cannot readjust the order for to your own liking which I, like i said i'm not a fan of i'm not sure why something so simple was taken away one nice feature that has changed this year is that they have adjusted the percentage that you get for players to where you can actually unlock their talents now at 90 percent instead of 100 percent, which should mean that if you do the the scouting right you'll get more talent unlocked which to me that's a big change because i felt like there wasn't enough like i i just felt like there wasn't enough ways to unlock the actual talent of the player and now that you don't even need it to be 100 percent to get that you just need the 90 percent that should open up the door for a lot more players that you can get to that spot to be able to upgrade them fully and now here in week two going back to the rookie blueprint is what it's called for the sitting of the quarterback you will get a prompt to discuss what they need to work on all right coach we're going to spend extra time developing the rookie quarterback great we'll work on everything but you can choose to have them, you know, randomly do it. You can have them choose to work on certain categories. Um, me, I want them to work on probably something of, of here. Actually, let's go accuracy this time. And then anything specific, you can develop them all or you can do one specifically. So I feel like if you do one specifically, you're probably going to get like a plus five there. Whereas if you do all of them, you'll get like a plus two or so something like that. Um, don't quote me on the on the numbers. I'm just using it as an example. But uh, for this instance, we're going to go develop them all because obviously we just want his accuracy to go up regardless. And then sometimes you'll get these extra press conferences. And then <laughs> this one, I, I'm going to botch this one because you they, they ask you about what happened in the game. And they ask you who deserves the credit. I don't even know what the score was. <laughs> so um, we're just going to go defense. I don't I don't know. I did this when I was testing too. I didn't realize it, but like, so you actually have to pay attention if you're simming like to the games that you're doing. And then it even asks you who gets a starting, you know, I don't know. We're just going to linebackers. I, I don't know. I, I don't even know what the outcome of the game was, but you, it'll actually ask you about like who gets these certain things and then it'll affect their morale here. So at the end, you know, they appreciate your words. They'll receive plus three play rec and plus tackle for the next game so essentially if you just know that there's a certain position you want to get a boost for the next game you could just do use it as that but it always ends up popping up in week two and then you also get one these ones while i haven't seen these a lot where it's a player meeting and you'll come into your office and here this is aaron jones thanks for meeting with me and he's gonna come out and say we're almost after the season i'm not involved in the offense enough well this is where it comes into where your players are not happy with what's going on with the system and they're going to ask you to change it. He says, I don't want just carries. I want some catches too. Give me the ball on screens and out of the backfield. So wait, what? <laughs> this guy's sort of being demanding right now. I don't know if he likes the way he's talking to Kevin O'Connell right now. And then you're going to get to choose four catches and 10 rush attempts. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're going to go for that. Four catches and 10 rush attempts. And who knows? Maybe we'll get it. Maybe we won't. But you need to do your part and catch the ball. <laughs> I'm setting some passive aggressiveness here. 
So and if you don't meet this, of course, his morale is going to drop and then chances of like resigning might be affected, or, you know, things of that nature. So it just adds a little bit more spice to the, the franchise for you. Now, these storylines can, you know, change from week to week. They can be different for everybody. Of course, there's a select amount of them that are in the game. So it's going to be just a sort of a, I don't know if it's a random dice roll or not, but it's going to affect a lot of the things, right? So it'll affect your weekly game plan, but it also can affect individual players. Like some of the ones that I got where it was like this week, the Rams, they have a, they have a, a really good wide receiver too and our corner might have a tough time our second corner might have a tough time and then you have to say well what does this player need to do better and it'll you can choose like good man coverage good press yada yada but whatever you choose it's also going to give a minus it's going to give a plus five in that category for that week but it's also going to give a minus five to a different stat so you have to be careful with what you're choosing but what i like about that is that can really actually change things right like if you choose man coverage and you get minus five zone well, if you run a lot of zone, you already put yourself at a disadvantage. Or if you just, you know, if you run man, but now you get beat on a couple of plays in zone because that person had the negative five, that could affect things in a very bad way. So it just adds a little bit more thought process to your franchise. And now if you just skip these all together, it's not gonna affect you in any way. It's not gonna auto choose for you. Um, so you can just skip them if you want to, but if you're looking at a, just a little bit more of a dynamic to your franchise, Definitely make sure you're clicking on all the storylines and all these different things every week to see what kind of trouble you can get yourself in or what kind of, you know, positives you can bring your team just by talking the right way. Oh boy. So I just looked and Aaron Jones had 17 carries and a touchdown, but he did not have four catches. So I think we're about to talk to a very upset Aaron Jones. You didn't give me the touches you promised. I'm a team player, but you need to hold up your end of the bargain. Let me guess your morale drop. <laughs> I better have 50 catches and 90 rush attempts. Time to focus the offense around me. Bro, who does this guy think he is? You don't want to find out? What? Did we just get threatened by our player? Okay, so... I mean... Uh, we we know Madden has never really been known for, for good, like, dialogue and writing in their storyline stuff. So, I, I guess I'll give him a pass. But, like, when, when KOC drops the, I've been guessing your morale will drop... Who is ever going to say that? <laughs> like, and then Aaron Jones comes back and basically threatens us if we don't get him what he wants. Like, bro, I'm not resigning you. But I mean, it's just add a little humor, add a little more, you know, zest to your fr to your franchise. I, I, I'm, I'm liking it. Is it a huge, absolutely shocking change? No, but it's something new. You will also get notified in the coaches hub if your team is getting too tired. So if you have it all set to a certain way, you can go ahead and you can change it. So that way, you know, they are okay for the rest of the week. And now that we made it to the end of the season, we get the storyline for the rookie blueprint. Okay, so what I've learned now is that if you want this to work, your quarterback has to not be listed in the depth chart. So I made sure he was out of the depth chart altogether. And then I was able to hit this bone. I had him as second or third quarterback last time I did this. It said he played too much. So you need to make sure he's completely out of the depth chart. And it said he had so much time to develop. He had a major breakthrough. I feel like he'll be ready to compete for the starting job next year. And Mahomes effect. Your patience with your rookie quarterback paid off. He earned 40,000 XP because he had time to develop all season and his throwing accuracies increased by one. So his accuracies only went up by one. So I'm assuming it probably like one or three if you do all like all on one of them. But to see that he got 40,000, that is going to drastically change the outlook of our rookie quarterback's future. Let's just see what that's going to mean here for him. So he's got seven upgrades now. He goes from a 72 to a 77 in one season. And we still don't know what his hidden development trait is, but we also know that he had a little boost to his accuracies. And now look at his accuracies. 91 short, not 86 for both medium and deep accuracy. Awareness is up much more from up from 63. Everything looks really good. He is ready to take on the starting job next year for sure. All right, let's see. Aaron Jones, you didn't give me the touches you promised. I'm a team player, but you need to hold up your end of the bargain. Okay, same thing. But I need to come back next year and prove it on the field. But you never know. I could be complaining about touches again next year. LOL. So they're not demanding a trade. So they can demand a trade in these scenarios if you don't do what they ask. But their morale is really low. And essentially, if you don't do it next year, they're probably going to want to trade. 
and then here is just the follow-ups from all of these so like if you when you do the stuff in the beginning of the season if you don't follow through on what you said you were going to did you see the viral video going around this morning what is it remember back in camp when you told that reporter at practice that our identity was to force turnovers and sacks yeah ryan clark was roasting us we didn't meet the goal feels like that wasn't our identity at all and you're getting a lot of the blame on social media and tv comes with the territory so <laughs> you i mean I, I, like I said, I don't know if any of this stuff actually matters at all in the long run. It might just be more of a, of an entertainment purpose for the, the person playing the game, but you know, it just adds to it. And that's sort of most of the stuff throughout the season that you'll deal with. And then you also sometimes get this at the end of the season where you'll, you'll be asked to talk to one of your players about off season workouts. So let's go ahead and let's talk to Jerry Tillery. Let me talk to him. And then we're going to go ahead. We're going to sit down with Jerry Tillery here and ask what he's focusing on. And then you have a chance here to change what they're going to work on for the offseason. You want to do strength and excel or an injury, or you can just say, sounds good, and let them do what they're doing. And then now he has an opportunity to come back better than ever at the, ne at the next season because of this, you know, scenario here. All right. And now this is what the scouting is going to look like at the end of the season. So you can see I only have 90% scouted on these defensive ends, but I have them at top five already. The only problem I have with this is that now 90% just means what it 100% meant last season. Um, but you can have the ability to unlock more stuff for players because they still earn percentages the same way as they did in the past with like matching up the coordinators and or matching up the, the scouts with the certain areas and whatnot. So if you watched my Madden 24 scouting tutorial, you can still apply the same stuff to this uh, this Madden 25 scouting but just know that your scouting percentages are going to change a little bit so now 90 percent is where you unlock their true talent and of course having the tier 2 scout on the national scout still gets you to the 90 percent so now i'm able to get all of this unlocked for all of the defensive ends and i was also able to get to 100 percent by having the tier 3 scout on a different one so now we have the entire defensive line well for the areas that i chose for d tackles unlocked fully and can know what we're looking at moving forward and you will also find some stuff around where like this guy here this doug carey i went ahead and i did the scouting on him or i did the extra the focus player on him so now we have a few extra there so i have a full defensive ends all unlocked i have a good chunk of defensive tackles unlocked and then i'll have up to six more players wherever i want that I can get 100% unlocked in order to know what their worth is going to be come draft time. And now it's working to where because it's the 30% and 40% on the, the focus scouting, you only need to do one upgrade per player. You will automatically get them to unlock the talent level just by focusing on them now. So whereas before you had to sort of double up on some depending on if you, you put any scouting towards that position or not, I didn't do any extra scouting on the care on Doug Carey here. He was at 60% like everybody else is, but now because the 90% is where it unlocks the talent, the first one at 30% still unlocked his full talent for me, even though he's not at 100%. So you will get more players fully unlocked for their talent, uh, their talent range, as opposed to last year where you sometimes had to double up on some of your focus players in order to unlock them without scouting their position. And then once you get to the off season, you're gonna have another press conference where you have to essentially tell the media what you're going to do. And this sort of does have an impact on your players as well, because if you try to dodge the questions and act like you're not gonna do anything, it can sometimes make the players not trust what you're doing. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say, make sure we win the draft. But if you go, there's no specific plan, it ends up backfiring. So you want to make sure you pick one. We need to win the draft this year. And this is where it wants you to, to select a certain player. So we're going to do a difference maker in the first three rounds. The problem is the overalls, I mean, you're really predicated on the draft even offering that. I had two drafts and I have yet to see an 80 overall player in either draft class. So you have to think about these things too of like, is this a possibility for me to be able to even do this? And that really is pretty much everything that I wanted to show you guys. I went over the few changes that are in the game. We did a little bit of a walkthrough of a season just to see how things are different from last year. Now, is this franchise 100% different? No, it is not. It, it's never going to be 100% different. This is going to be what we have, and they'll probably add some more stuff. Maybe they'll add something different down the line in a, in a mid-season or mid-cycle you know, cycle update or patch. But this is what we have, right? I am actually looking forward to playing the, the franchise this year because... 
while there's not a whole lot of changes i do like the changes they did make i like the addition of the storylines and having to keep players happy i wish it was actually more intense i wish there was more storylines that i had to worry about and more players i had to balance um at one time because i feel like that can really adjust how your team sits and affect your decision making with trades resigns all that kind of thing um i also am excited about the scouting I i'm happy they lowered the threshold in order to unlock a player's full capability for their talent so that way you don't have to spend countless amount of time on this one particular player just to get them unlocked now you have you know up to six players that you'll easily unlock without even having to scout that area with your with your eight with your scouts so i mean essentially what you could do is if you have like say five or six players out of one position that you want to scout but you don't really care for the rest of them you could almost use that your your focus scouting and then your end of the year focus scouting as a like a fifth or sixth scout that is out there for you working on just that position you know what i mean I had just do all six running backs if I didn't if I didn't scout running backs. So now I have the six guys that I deemed as my favorites throughout the season, and those are the guys that I scouted. So I know everything about those six running backs or any position that you could think of. But I, I am excited about it. Is it a lot of change? Like I said, not really. But there is some new stuff, and it might help some of you guys feel a little bit more immersed in the franchise. And hopefully, it does end up affecting things more often as you go down the line with these different players and throughout the seasons. But that is all I have for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are excited for Madden 25 franchise, let me know down below. Hit that like button, subscribe if you have not already, and turn on that bell notification, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.